to uh, uh, Monday night uh, hostage situation slash therapy session for everyone here. Uh, I know some people actually sometimes do stand-up comedy as a form of therapy. Uh, if you do that, though, you should actually get uh, real therapy as well. Uh, I don't think this is enough. This is not enough to get you the approval of strangers. Uh, hey, and, and congratulations, dude, on, on, uh, on uh, your first time on stage. That's really well done. You're confident. That's nice. And you brought a lot of friends out? It's always nice when people like come out and support a comic for the first time on stage, or they come out to support before the show. They're like, oh man, takes a lot of guts to get up there. And then hopefully his set goes well, and then you, or, or maybe it doesn't. And then you have to get off stage, and then you see him and go, well, you know, it took a lot of guts to get up there. So, <laughs> there's always different kinds of feedback going on though. Uh, and thank you for sitting up in the front row. That is kind of, I don't, this is technically the front row, but if this is empty, technically now you were from the front row. That's always good to see. I don't know what happened in the 80s or the 90s to make comedy club audiences have this like form of PTSD that they're all afraid to sit in the front row. Like everyone's all worried about people, they're gonna get made fun of and shit. That's, that hasn't really happened tonight, you know? I always think, you know, I, I, bet, I, bet, I bet there are a lot of strippers out there that wish that their audiences had the fear of sitting in the front row <laughs> the way that comedy club audiences do. Man, if you've ever been to a strip club before, man, nobody's afraid to sit in that front row. Holy shit. It is just like, like a magnet for perverts, you know? I'd actually, I think that'd be kind of refreshing, you know? You, you go to a strip club, the dancer's on stage, she takes out a microphone, starts making fun of the people in the front row. <laughs> I'd like to see that, you know, she's there, she's working the pole, she's like, hey, where are you from? Hamilton? Well, I'll speak much slower then, you know. <laughs> Not the greatest crowd work in the world, but you know, that's not what we hired her for. I, uh, I hosted a lot of shows, and some uh, comedians, we love to get up on stage, we love to get up on stage. Doesn't matter if it's a big crowd or a small crowd, we'll get up no matter what the fuck, that's we, we live for this, you know? And I was at a show hosting once where uh, um, it wasn't a big, it made the room sat maybe about 80 people. There was five people in the audience, right? But there's, there's about 14 comics that want to go on. And we're, uh, I'm hosting, there's about seven comics go on. And, uh, and then, they're like the five people, they're, maybe they're sitting right here. Those five people, they had to get up and leave, right? I'm not going to hold that against them. They've been there for like an hour. They, they did their time. Right? So they get, they get up and leave, so now the room is completely fucking empty, but there's still six or seven comedians that still want to go on. And I'm like, why are we doing this? Let's, let's, when the show should be over, right? There's no crowd, there's no audience, but they want to go on. And uh, so this one guy, he's on stage, and he's like, uh, he's very confident. He's like, yeah, yeah, all right. This is going pretty good. How do you know that? There's no one here, right? He's going, yeah, this is going pretty good. This is my first time up on stage. I guess you could say that I'm losing my comedy virginity. And I was like, all right, okay. So I get back up on stage and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. If there's nobody in the audience, you have not lost your comedy virginity, okay? If there's nobody in the audience, you are basically masturbating on stage, okay? No one else is getting off on this. You're the only one that's enjoying yourself, really. There's nothing... That's like saying I get laid all the time, but I don't like to get another person involved. It's just, you know. I always, you can always tell how long a comedian's been doing comedy from the way that they say that they're a comedian. You know, if someone's like, hey, I'm a comedian. I'm like, okay, why have you been doing this? Uh, what, uh, one year, two years, maybe three? I always like a comedian, when they tell me that they're a comedian, they say it with a sort of enthusiasm, like they just told me that they're a registered sex offender. That's. <laughs> Or they've been busted for drinking and driving. That's the, that's the amount of enthusiasm that I like. I'm just like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm a comedian. I don't know what I've been doing. It's, yeah, I could have done a lot of other things, but I don't know why. I just started doing this. No reason. No fucking clue what I'm doing. It's a sickness, though. You, and, it's, and also, when a girl tells you how much they like and think that you're funny, that's basically like saying, oh, thank you for loving my defense mechanism. Right? <laughs> Thank you for loving how I deal with pain. That's, not, that's basically what you're saying, right?